All right, Wayne, can you hear me? I can, Ralph. Very cool. New Age Messiah, can you hear me? I can. Very cool. All right, we have a meeting of the minds here. Now, let me read this. Wayne. Hello, Jay. Yeah, hello, Jay. All right, Wayne. Well, wait, we'll do, we'll do that in just a second. Let me ask Wayne this, though, because somebody sent me in a super chat. I don't know anything about this, Wayne, so I, I've not seen this person. I don't think they've been in my chat before, but I guess they knew you were here or whatever. But they sent me in this super chat, and you can respond however you want don't, or not respond if you want. It says, can you please tell Wayne Lambright to stop slandering my good name or I'll sue him? I already contacted my lawyers in December and need his contact info. Well, you'll have to take care of that yourself. But he says, regards, Andrew Ayala, Huffcake slash Cloud Sprout. I don't know who that is, Wayne. Do you know who that is? You don't have to comment if you don't want, but no comment. Okay, that's fine. Again, I have no clue who that is, uh, and I'm not seeing in my chat. But you know, I know that there's some people who follow you around or whatever, and so whatever. Um, anyway, I asked it. Uh, now, how you doing, Wayne? I'm doing good. Uh, I got good news this week that I'm getting about fifty thousand dollars in inheritance. However, Charles Schwab, which has my money, won't give it to me because they can't verify my address, yet they send me paperwork to the address that they can't verify the address. Yeah, I remember you talking so about that. Yeah, go ahead. It's a type of discrimination, and I'm not sure if it's because I'm running for president, and they've mailed many things to my home saying they can't verify my address, yet when I talk to them, they acknowledge that they sent me things to my home, and even the employees say it's kind of weird. So there's something behind it. I'm going to have to sue them. I'll get the money. Well, I hope you get it. And uh, I remember you talking about this a little bit before, but uh, let me put out a uh, notification that uh, you guys are live uh, here on the show. Now, Jay, introduce yourself. Wayne's been on here a number of times. Uh, you've just been on here once. I think most people in the audience know Wayne's story. Um, but introduce yourself and give a very condensed uh, version of your story. Am I on the show right now? Yes. Okay. Hi, I'm Jay. I was uh, 40 years old approximately and had been a Christian and decided to find something new when I realized it wasn't true and declared a mission to go into the depths. And I did go into the depths and I did find something new. And then there were all kinds of miracles. Uh, the revelation was look your heart in the mirror. And a goddess spoke to me and I made world news and solved lost. And it's the greatest true story ever told. Now, that is a very condensed version, and we had him on, I think, two weeks ago yesterday, uh, if you want to see that. So, uh, and I'm going to clip it uh, in and of itself tomorrow. I just haven't had time to do uh, a lot of clips. Um, now, I guess, Wayne, for the benefit of, of Jay, why don't you give a condensed version of your story? Hello, Jay. Um, currently, I'm running for president of the United States this is my third term for eight years and about five months. I'm a uh, early internet pioneer, electrical engineer and physicist. And I know a lot about exotic top secret technology that's being withheld. Um, if global warming is true and they want to get us off fossil fuels, the technology to get us off fossil fuels has been around for maybe 50 plus years. So there's something they're not telling us and I'm trying to force the hand as a politician. And when I started running for president, I didn't know how anti-gravity worked yet. Four years ago, I was able to figure it out. And then I accidentally discovered how gravity works, which is against the laws of uh, Newton and Einstein. So we are kind of living in a world of um, like if electricity didn't exist and we still had to light our homes with candles or whale oil, but secretly electricity does exist. So we're living in a a backwards world, and I'm trying to leap forward us into the future. All right, so we'll have a little meeting of the minds here. Now, what do you think about that, Jay? Doesn't sound too far-fetched. I've read stuff like that since I started reading weird shit. You know, that there was all kinds of secret things, you know, what was his name, Tesla, and, you know, and I don't believe in gravity as we know it or as we believe it to be, so... Pat Paulson sent five. Yeah, gravity's on electromagnetism. Wayne Lambright yeah, exactly. And there's the yeah, what yeah. is it? Uh, the the you know the uh, ether is. Uh, oh, I forget what the theory is called, but uh, electric universe. I think it's called. Yes, electric universe theory is 
is how I got started on this path, except electric universe theory doesn't discuss, it doesn't understand what gravity is. And that's where I was able to merge them to my idea. And um, so after I saw anti-gravity working, I figured it out. And then that gave me enough courage to question a current convention, which is a misnomer that the, the earth has a molten iron core. It's not molten because molten iron is not magnetic. And I said, well, what if the, the iron core is solid and not molten? And if, if that premise is true, then the iron core of the earth can induce electricity from the sun since the sun is not a hydrogen furnace, it's a plasma discharge. The plasma. sun is nothing more than a giant light bulb projecting electricity. And Michael Faraday, electrical induction says, a ferrite material in the presence of a moving magnetic field. And so if that's true and the iron core is solid, then we are inducing electricity from the sun and then transforming into an electric magnet. And then there's additional evidence that the aurora borealis at the North and South Pole are evidence of high voltage, which is a plasma on a gas. Yeah. Yeah, none of that trips me out at all. <laughs> so you already know about this then, Jay? Yeah, I've read, I'm not like a scholar of it, but I've read, you know, a significant amount about electric universe and the, uh, what did you just say? What was that word we just said? Uh, uh, like the blood. Electrical induction? No, the stuff in your blood, plasma. A plasma, <laughs> yeah. Basically plasma connects everything together. Well, plasma in the blood is different from a, um, the, there's five, sto five states but, of matter. Strong but that's force the word. Force, the magnetic word plasma. Force, electromagnetic force and plasma. And plasma is when a high voltage is on a gas, it emits photons. And that ex that explains like the sun. So a high voltage on the gases at the sun are emitting photons that we call light. Light is electric magnetic radiation. And I'm sure there's some burning going on. It's not, but the sun is not, a it's not logs on the fireplace. It's a plasma. Also, I, I, gotta, I, I just so. got a super chat here from Pat Paulson, and he said, Wayne Lambright 2024 uh, is what he said there in chat. I don't know if you know that guy or not. But, um, yeah, Pat's a huge supporter of mine. James cool. Gartner sent $1 on Rumble. You know weird yeah. people. I like that. It's James bright. Gartner, he, um, James Gardner with a super chat says, you know weird people. I like that. It's bright. Lambright. Thank you, James Gardner. Go ahead. Finish your thought, Wayne. Well, there's, there's a... There's only one re one reason why my ideas are not being accepted, and it's because it makes oil obsolete. If you, if we are to consider UFOs to be true, is there a gas tank? Is do they run on diesel or gasoline? No, they run on an an, an unknown source of power, most likely electricity. And then there's um, alien visitation stories of where humans have gone inside alien ships and. There's stories of crystals. Like one guy said there was a big basketball sized crystal. It looked like acrylic glass, a little bit cloudy. And I know about the piezoelectric effect. So that's when you squeeze a rock, it makes electricity. We've all experienced this with the barbecue lighter on a propane gas grill where you push the button and it goes click. And then a spark happens. Well, that click is hitting a little crystal and that crystal makes a few thousand volts to make a spark gap to blow off the propane. So squeezing crystals will make electricity. And in the inverse, if you put electricity on a crystal, it'll move, it'll vibrate. So I think what's happening in these uh, spacecraft, there's a few, there's multiple power sources and one of them could be vibrating crystals. What do you think, Jay? Making high voltage. High voltage displaces the Earth's gravity because it's a repelling force. And uh, there's lots of examples of this working, but they just don't call it anti-gravity. They call it they call it ion wind. There's something called an ion wind thruster, and you use a like 10,000 volt transformer for um, neon lights. And it's a couple wires, and it will lift right off the desk right away. So I'll let Jay respond to that. And I brought you guys in because you both have a lot of doubters, you know, about your theories and stuff like that. So I thought, why not cross? the streams here uh, and bring you both on at the same time. Now, Wayne's been on many times. Uh, Jay's only been on here once. Um, but I thought we'd do that crossover. And we'll probably have you back as well, Jay, just to talk one-on-one uh, -on -one as well. But uh, what are you snacking on there, Wayne? Uh, sunflower seeds. Okay. 
I used to eat those when I was a kid. I used to play baseball. They yeah. didn't let us chew tobacco, obviously, so I would have <laughs> sunflower seeds. Um, any thoughts there, Jay? Well, yeah, I have my stock responses. Or basically, when anybody says UFOs, I am skeptical, and I think most of it's a psyop. And uh, the reason the reason I'm most skeptical is because of uh, TV shows like Aliens and. Uh, I forget the show, but it has all these pictures of basically here's what the bottom line is, is that they theorize that, for instance, the ancient Egyptians worshipped aliens. And anybody that says that the gods are aliens to me is full of shit. <laughs> they, I mean, they don't know. They're guessing. And everybody can guess as much as they want. But I know for a fact that there's a real goddess that's absolutely omniscient, omnipotent, talks to me, cares, does miracles, is involved in the world is not a freaking alien because i mean an alien might be possible i'm not saying it isn't but i think most of the conjecture that leads people to believe in aliens is either something else a psyop or just people not wanting to believe in gods and thinking everybody that believed in gods was an idiot you know so that's my basic answer i don't have like a super scientific answer all right wayne you got a counterpoint to that i don't tend to believe in aliens either honestly um but I'm open to the, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not, I'm, I don't just say that it can't be true or that they're definitely not aliens. I just come from a skeptical uh, standpoint on aliens. But I like listening to content where people, you know, theorize about it and, you know, listen to, I used to listen to Coast to Coast uh, a lot when I was younger with uh, Art Bell, actually, and George Norrie. Uh, but I was listening even when Art Bell was still there. Um, what about aliens, Wayne? Well, I haven't seen a dinosaur or a tri Tyrannosaurus rex. <laughs> However, there, there's a certain amount of evidence that gives me the feeling that it most likely was true. And the same exists for aliens. Uh, I don't believe that we evolved on Earth. We're too special. If we evolved from apes, then why didn't the other apes evolve with us? Um, there's lots of holes in these theories. And... I, I just really believe that we are this, the children of people from another planet. Like, if we be, have the ability to be intergalactic, we're going to do colonies on other Earth-like planets, and we're going to keep colonizing other planets, and hopefully we come back and check on them, but something might happen to us, and we can't come back and do a check on our children that we abandoned on some planet. And that's what might have happened to us. Uh, I had a theory that the Greeks were extraterrestrials because you have this real big gap there's no evolution which led to the greek structures like those buildings the path pantheon mm -hmm. their their rich culture of language and arts and gods like out of nowhere you got mud huts in africa then all of a sudden you got these greek the greek civilization and the greek language and the greek arts and that takes literally thousands and thousands of years to mature. So I hypothesize that it was basically Gilligan's Island, that the Greeks were on an extraterrestrial cruise ship of old people just checking out the galaxy on a spacecraft. They came to Earth and got stranded, and there were no electrical engineers. There were civil engineers, there was artists, but no electrical engineers to build a radio home. You still doubting, Jay? Am I doing what? Are you still doubting aliens? What do you think about Greeks? <laughs> well, nothing he says is, you know, totally disagreeable to me. It's just, like I say, I know for a fact that there's a real goddess. And so I know for a fact that the Egyptians weren't worshiping uh, aliens. And a lot of a lot of that comes from that, to uh, believe in aliens. And, yeah, there are absolutely stupendous architectural achievements that we see the pyramids being one where it's just absolutely no way you can explain it. There's all kinds of stuff you can't explain. And then what I did read in Egypt, which you start from something maybe you know as a fact, which is I'm maybe the only person on earth alive at this time that knows anything religious for a fact. And I can establish that and I can't be discredited. But you start with what one thing you know for a fact, okay, the goddess is real of Egypt and she's really not just an Egyptian goddess and there was never a chosen people Egypt. She spoke to an American in, in the USA Anyway, so I know that for a fact. Uh, then in Egyptian writings, the gods and goddesses used to live among the people. 
So you have somebody, I mean, the intelligence is unfathomable. Anybody who prays to God doesn't understand what a God is because a God knows absolutely freaking everything already. And so there's no reason to do anything to inform a God or beg a God or anything like that because they'll do what they're going to do and they already know everything, blah, blah, blah. So uh, what was I leading to? Um, the, the gods and goddesses lived among the people. So if there were gods and goddesses and then they left, that's what the Egyptian story says. Now, I don't know that for a fact. I would never say, oh, that's the way it is. Like Christians, they read something in a book and now all of a sudden they act like they know it for a fact. I don't know that for a fact. But I do know for a fact that the goddess Tefnut is real. She's alive. She's cooking. She's very angry. Shit's going on, right? And uh, the Egyptian stories have, I'll give you, I think I brought this up last week where uh, I find out the goddess that spoke to me was Tefnut, which was not, it took like a month after she spoke to me to figure out what her name was. So then I look in everything I can find about Tefnut. And then one guy uh, interviewed an indigenous wisdom keeper, uh, <clears throat> Mailer is his name. And the indigenous wisdom keeper of Egypt said, uh, the Sphinx is Tefnut. And that the Sphinx had like a cat-like head and Tefnut had like a cat-like cat -like head, right? So I'm like, that's kind of wild, you know? And I knew nothing about Egypt when I started this, right? <laughs> nothing. And so I started reading about the Sphinx. And the first thing I read is he, the Sphinx talked to a uh, pharaoh and said, if you get the sand off from, you know, the sand was piled up around the bottom of the Sphinx or whatever, and get the sand off, I'll make you pharaoh, something like that. So... I'm on Godlike Productions. I find that story because I'm starting to talk about Tefnut. The first thing I said was Tefnut is real on the Godlike Productions after, you know, I started out. My first thread on there, I think, was Jesus was an asshole <laughs> because of all the stories about Jesus telling people they're going to burn in hell. And, you know, if they don't bear fruit and if the five virgins forget their oil, they're fucked forever. Shit like that. So I'm like, Jesus was an asshole. You know, I was like making waves on that. And then I like figured out that the goddess that spoke to him was Tefnut. So I said, Tefnut is real. And then the next thing, you know, not too much later, I says the story about Tefnut is the Sphinx. And then I say the Sphinx, uh, the story about the Sphinx telling the guy he'll be the Pharaoh, right? And there's already all kinds of miracles. I mean, the miracles are like dominoes. They just keep coming and coming and coming. And they are earth shattering miracles. They're not like I had a 10 on my card and it was a 10 that I needed, you know, st shit like that. That's common everyday stuff. These are earth shattering miracles. And anyway, so I post that on Godlike Productions that story about the Sphinx speaking to that guy and making him Pharaoh. Cause I'm kind of like hot dogging it. I'm going to be the Pharaoh. You know, I was kind of talking shit like that. Not necessarily as going to be the Pharaoh, but you know, I'm a new age Messiah. I mean, I don't know what the hell that means that I'm the new age Messiah. I just know that after I said I was miracles kept happening and they were massive <laughs> miracles. So uh, I post that story about the Pharaoh getting spoken to by the Sphinx. And the same day or within 24 hours i you know you just kind of the time kind of blends a little bit but it was right away they dug up the pharaoh uh statue the statue of the pharaoh that the sphinx spoke to they dug it up there was a new story i'm like holy shit! And, you know so i post that story right away and it's like they dug up the statue of the pharaoh that the sphinx spoke to the day that i posted the story about the sphinx talking to the pharaoh it was like freaking freaking out so all i'm saying is while there is no sure explanation and i'm not being freaking emphatic about it at all i do believe and believe is the key word here which christians i wish they knew the meaning of that word i do believe that the gods and goddesses lived among the people and that i know for a fact that they're freaking light years ahead of us in intelligence and ability and and they very well could have been wandering around and teaching people shit like how to build pyramids and how to you know build these beautiful things now i don't know that at all but it's just as easy to postulate that as it is that it was aliens but i don't have anything against the theory that it was that to some extent aliens visited and we were populated from aliens because i don't have now the even i don't think the egyptian myth that i've read i haven't been a scholar about it but uh the egyptian story doesn't say much about how people were created that i've read it just talks about how the gods and goddesses were created and then where people come from or where the animals come from and all that. I don't think it says, or at least the stuff that I've read and their language hasn't been translated as easily. So there might be other stuff in there, but uh, there, you know, I think there, at least in my study, there's a gap about the creation, but I think the first place to look for the best ideas about it is in the Egyptian stuff. Because like I say, there's a proven Egyptian goddess proven, you know, there's no proof whatsoever of anything that Israel did was anything special.
or anything. You know, you look at there, it's just a wasteland. There's nothing that comes to mind. You look at the Egypt and there's these pyramids, how the hell they build them, nobody knows. Now they, they're coming up with a theory lately that they uh, cast those rocks. They uh, used just basically cement to make them, which is possible. I'm not ruling that out. So, All right. Wayne, any thoughts on on that? Do, do you believe that the, the Egyptian gods and goddesses uh, were real? Also, we got a little feedback. I think that's from you, Wayne. You might have to turn the volume down a little bit. Um, is that coming out of your PC or somebody's PC? Maybe that's... No, I don't have any noisemakers on. That might be that might be you, New Age Messiah. I'm not sure, but somebody might need to turn their volume down just a little. Uh, like, I, I'm just hearing a little feedback. Um any follow up on that, Wayne? Do you, do you believe the Egyptian gods and goddesses were living uh, amongst them? Do you be- believe in the Egyptian gods and goddesses, etc.? Um, well, a lot of my my um, thoughts come from things I've learned. So I I started off my some of my academics in, as being an artist and doing artworks and studying art, and then. Um, but at the same time, I was a mechanic for BMW, which is a lot of engineering and physics, electronics. And uh, just in the last eight years, I started studying physics. And so I'm looking at the pyramids more like, how did they mo- move those big rocks, which is a mystery. And it's one of the things I'm trying to solve as an adult that I think I can solve. And I think I actually have solved how you move those big things called monolithic rocks and i look at things from an engineering standpoint like really like why and how was it made and if you look at the material used to build the pyramid it's a little too weird that they mixed different things um it's not just bricks they're using very difficult granite in the middle for really no reason so there has to be a reason and and uh, the i think the reason is actually um piezoelectric effect which is making electricity i'm i'm 100 i'm certain that it's made to make electricity i just don't know what they're doing with the electricity and i have a pretty good theory which actually came to me about a year ago and it wasn't it wasn't like a, a logical theory it was because of i i listened to a, a show on art bell 1995 mm-hmm. um madman markham who made something called a Jacob's Ladder. And a Jacob's Ladder are two wires like this with an electric bolt going But right up here was a shimmering thing and he threw a bolt at it, at the weird shimmering thing, and the bolt disappeared from the room. Then 10 minutes later, the bolt came back. So he accidentally invented a time machine of sorts. And the, the story goes on further and He does some time travel, allegedly. However, if the pyramids are making high voltage, because this is a high voltage device, like 30,000 to 100,000 volts, up to a million volts, are there a million volts coming out of the pyramid? And are there any structures like this around the pyramids? And it turns out there are. And And it's called the the Gates of Hercules. So... If the obelisks, which which look like this, are actually a Jacob's ladder where there's a lightning bolt, well, in the middle of the lightning bolt would be a big obscure circle, which we might today call as a stargate. So maybe the pyramids of Egypt were actually stargate power stations. I can't say this for certainty. However, there's a lot of weird things going on. Like there, uh, some uh, archaeologists had dug very deep into the earth buy some old pyramid structures and maybe like 20 feet below ground they found some rocks solid granite with like a little groove a groove this big but the rock itself is as big as a volkswagen and it just looks like a rain gutter but it's 20 feet below the ground like what is it doing down there what is its purpose like so it's more than just drainage to make drainage, you just use a clay pipe. This this could have been an electrical conduit. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna top this on top. The cherry on the top is a remote viewing episode from the Farsight Institute, where um, Courtney Brown tasked three of the world's best remote viewers 
to remote view the pyramid. And if you don't know what remote viewing is, it's like a, a psychic experience where on a piece of paper, it says target 12. And they don't know what target 12 means, but Courtney Brown says target 12 is the pyramids. So they're like thinking about target 12, which means the pyramids, but they don't know it. And they, they actually start describing the pyramids and they say how they're built. And this guy says that there's an underground chamber where there's humans that are not so smart, who are like worker bees. And then there's an alien growing humans in pods, like the movie, The Matrix. And the alien looks like a praying mantis, eight foot tall. It's got, it's got motherly attributes where it, it really loves and cares about the humans that it's growing. And these humans are pushing the rocks into place. The rocks are carved out of the earth with a, a noise so loud that when it carves them out, it makes birds fly away from 10 feet or 10 miles away, birds will scatter. So it just sounds like technology, not of this world. And they're building an organic power station. The earth itself has its own vibration, which is about six cycles per second. And I think the enormous weight of the pyramid is needed to harness the pulse of the earth. And I, I actually think that maybe this is so re ridiculous, but basically there's the sub chamber, the pyramid, uh, there's a static electricity that goes to the sub chamber that makes hydrogen from the water because there's water down there. Then that water filters its way up to the queen's chamber in the queen's chamber. There are these, these square tunnels going all the way out, but in the middle is a, a roadblock with two copper fingers pointing down why two copper fingers but actually in electrical engineering that would be called a spark gap so the static electricity could accumulate in those chambers and make the spark make those fingers be a spark gap and they could spark so if there was hydrogen in the queen's chamber then it would go boom and when it goes boom it would vibrate everything and then it would make more electricity in the cone and there's only one place for it to go is which is in the sub chamber yeah. making more hydrogen and more boom so the pyramid would be would be like boom 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 and it'd be like a little motor making electricity for what i don't know all right now jay i'm gonna let you respond to that in just a second but i see a super chat from pat paulson he says spontaneous creation of quarks also if you have any super chat topics you want to bring up I'm just kind of winging this and, and doing a discussion. It's our Saturday bonus show. But if you have any topics you want to bring up, powerchat.live slash the Ralph Retort, Rumble Rants, killstream.live slash tip, dollar sign, Sunset Squad, any of those options uh, are there. Also, Wayne, before I go to Jay, do, do you have ta is the, are those tattoos on your fingers? I don't think I've ever noticed that. No, they're fake tattoos. Oh, okay. The guy who, gave, the guy who um, said he's going to sue me is some idiot who's been stalking me for years. And he's got heart tattoos on his fingers because he's a guy who used to be in jail. And so I was I was ridiculing him with heart tattoos today. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I didn't know that. I'm glad I asked because I, I, you've been on the show many times and I, it, it was almost distracting me a little bit because I've never seen those on your yeah, on your hands. I, I don't have – I'm not a tattoo person, so I'm kind of curious why a man would put heart tattoos on his middle fingers. It must be some kind of prison thing. Yeah, I – I don't know. I see it. I guess so, if that's the guy in chat, just one on my re wedding ring finger. Look, I don't know anything about it. But I had to ask because it was distracting. He's got a gay obsession with me. He's gay. He's obsessed with me. He wants to rape me. What? He's he's got he's like lost his mind. He got arrested for slashing 33 tires in Las Vegas. He's bipolar. His website is all off the hook nuts. He's just weird. What kind of website? Like what is he? What does he talk about on there? I don't want to give him the time of day. Okay, so all right. I, no, that's fine. That's fine. Sorry. I, that, 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 the fake tats is just distracted me. That's the only reason I asked because I had not seen them. You've been on here many times, and I was like, did you get tatted up since since the last time you've been on? I thought that was, like, wild. Uh, but, okay, all right. You explained it. Um, okay, Jay, go ahead. And also, you, you can follow up on anything he said. I know that was a long uh, bit there. Um, but you can follow up on anything he said. And also, if, if you've had any um, – run-ins with people trying to allegedly I again I, I don't know anything about it are uh, trying to fuck fuck with you or, or anything like that you can talk about that too 
not the major just a lot of people a lot of like it just gets so tiring that people their instant reaction is almost like pavlov pavlov's dog they uh immediately say the same crap everybody says the same type crap to me you know everybody thinks i'm crazy and because i say a god spoke to me and they just start making all these you know the same it's just ridiculous and now i have been I'm just telling this for Wayne's benefit because I told your audience a couple of weeks ago, I have been on Anderson Cooper. I have made massive tidal waves in the in the world politically. <laughs> I held a sign in front of Hillary Clinton's face about five feet away that said, who killed Vincent Foster? Mm -hmm. And, you know, shit like that. Uh, as far as making trouble, and, and this is a weird story. This hasn't anything, I don't, it's not really in my wheelhouse to understand technically. I do think that something in there, the way he's talking about, like the, you know, the way that the pyramid is designed is has nothing to do with a burial site. It's some kind of, some kind of technical thing that's accomplishing something. But, uh, what was I going to talk about? Uh, oh, the, okay. So here's like, this is just like chit chat. Right. But, uh, when I was, I got back from Germany and I was, uh, in the army there and i was speaking german they taught me russian in the in dli defense language institute they sent me to germany i taught myself german i basically became a german i lived on the german economy went out every night talked to germans i was hanging out with germans and the wall uh came down i was in my car listening live that they were talking about it right so i go to the bar that night and uh or the next, it must have been the next night because it was too early. But uh, the next night I go down where I always go, see a girl sitting there, right? And kind of start talking to her, kind of hitting on her a little bit and just back and forth. It usually takes them a couple minutes before they realize I'm not from Germany. And then uh, I find out she's from Wait, East do you German. speak German? Yes. You do? In Russian. Well, a damn. dog wolf I didn't know $1 that. on Rumble. Yeah. Um, Wait, the pyramids weren't used to store grains? Okay, ben well, go Carson ahead. Lied to me. And by the way, yeah, I'll, so, I'll, I'll read this super chat real quick. Ada Wolf says, Wait, the pyramids pyramids weren't used to store grains? Ben Carson lied to me. Ada Wolf said there. <laughs> um, well, yeah, I didn't know you spoke German and Russian. But anyway, go ahead. I, I didn't mean to cut you off. I just wanted to clarify. Yeah, that's Because they I'll would know I'm little, not German right away because I don't speak German. Um, I'll tell another little part of the story. But uh, anyway, I go to the, I hook up with this East German girl uh, the night after the wall came down, take her back to my place, right? They were so probably pretty I'm, loose that night, weren't they? Uh, if I had to. Well, it was only one chick, and she was sitting by herself, and I just happened to talk to her, and it's not. It wasn't like it wasn't. Yeah, but like I mean, they were probably you know. In a this was a couple miles. This was a couple hundred miles in from the border, in Bremen. Uh, anyway, the the punchline of the story is that I hooked up with. So I'm the first American to plant the flag in uh, commie territory after the fall of the Berlin Wall. So I'm an American that's hero. That's a, that's a love story. It was, I'm telling you, it was magical. Because you're like, I'm a little boy from South Dakota, you know? I barely knew anything. Now, was I'm she hot? I'm assuming yes. She was above average. I'm not going to say she was like, but here's another. One to ten, what would you give her? My best friend at the time, she was a seven. And my best, she had big, big boobs. Okay. You know, almost too pretty... big for my. But, <laughs> my uh, dad used to say anything more than a handful was a waste. But Yeah, sorry. I don't like him big. I like him like normal size, a little, you know. Even small is, is nice, so depending on how long you're going to be with the girl. The longer you're with the girl, the farther they fall. That's true. But uh, anyway, what was I going to say? Oh, uh, da, 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 da. Love story. Your my, best friend, my best friend at the time was a German engineer guy, and we used to talk every night. And sometimes he talked so fast, I'd be like, oh, my God. I mean, he's a really smart guy and just gentle. Did never hit on girls, you know. I was only I was there to hit on girls, <laughs> mostly, you know. Or you know, it was good to chat with everybody, you know. But he never hit on girls. So I tell my the girl from East Germany, we started hanging out together. She was living with me for a couple three weeks. I said, Pat if I was a, sent one dollars on Rumble. Woman, I would go More after info Folker. On those cans. Uh, was his name? I said I would be after Folker. <laughs> sure enough, her and Fol her and Folker hooked up, and at my good going away party, they were there. So it's a weird thing about German culture, you know. It's like they. To me, I would never hang out with a guy who had been with my girl. I would just be like, you know what I mean? There's just this, but he just liked hanging out with me. He knew I'd been with his girl. And so that was. Uh, also, I see the, Pat Paulson says more info on those cans uh, is what he said with the super chat. <laughs> <laughs> they were too, they were too spongy or whatever, you know, they weren't, they were fluffy. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah. Ryan, I've got if, some feedback. Yeah, go I ahead. got some feedback from Jay on his uh, his uh, God his God connection. Okay. Um. Well, it basically our thoughts in science that we agree that when we have a thought, there's an electrical impulse in our brain. There's axons and neurons. And that when I think about picking up the pencil, some electricity happened in my brain to make that happen. And then it sent a signal to my muscles and then I lifted the pencil. So our brain, those, those nerve endings, there's something called the right-hand rule of current where the thumb is pointing in a direction and my fingers tell you the rotation of the perpendicular magnetic field. And now this might not sound important. However, this is actually the principle of radio transmission. So our brain is a transmitter. I'm saying that our brain is a transmitter and a receiver. So in the world of the, the power of positive thinking or the power of negative thinking, if, if, if you believe something's possible, maybe it is. And if you believe something is not possible, it probably isn't. So we, we manifest our own environment through our own thoughts. And I do believe if you feel like you have a connection to God or something beyond this earth, the radio transmissions travel at the speed of light. And like, like the 1930 Olympics or whenever Germany put on those Olympics and it was the first television broadcast, we can calculate where in the, in the universe that electrical signal is traveling from the earth. And it hasn't reached other planets yet. And um, it's on its way. So when you have positive thoughts and positive intentions, I believe that the, there is a consciousness in the universe. I believe that we are, all, we are all connected at some level, us humans on earth, and then also our ancestors. And I believe that you can, like he might, Jay might have tapped into a powerful source that is trying to, to uh, transmit inf information through his human body. Uh, I didn't used to believe in reincarnation, but I saw a few episodes of the Y files where some young individuals were having adult thoughts and, a, and they were able to back it up with some evidence. So there's just so much we don't understand about the world we live in. And I would just say to anybody, like with an open mind, anything's possible. And uh, also like the spiritual phenomena and the world of spirituality, current and past tense, they, there's lots of language that says to trust in God and to have faith and to like basically live a, a good life and good things will come to you. And I believe that to be true. I can't say it's scientific, but I, I think I might know a little bit of science that is leading me towards evidence that it is true. So Jay might be a conduit for a higher power. And that's why he feels so empowered to, to speak his, his truth. That's it. Do you think, I mean, that's kind of what you're saying, isn't it, Jay? Or is it? You can. Uh, Are you a I'm conduit not, for higher power or, or what, how do you consider yourself, I guess? No, I declared a mission to find something new because I hated religion with a passion. And I did find something new. And then the miracles uh, were such that only an omnipotent, omniscient, caring person I don't want to say person, but you know, somebody, the way I think about of it is uh, if you think about all the, like he's talking scientifically, the billions and billions and billions and billions and trillions and trillions of interactions that turn you from a sperm and an egg into a thinking conscious human being. I mean, if you think about, let's say the man hours, if everything had to be put into place and then changed and then swapped and then put into place and changed and swapped and stretched and grown and you know the furnace that had to create all this energy and the gazillions of interactions that had to occur now what i think is doing all those interactions is god or the creator because my my motto when i uh started my mission was reality is god when you pretend to lie you cease to exist you die and so my my motto is, you know, be real, or my goal is to be as completely real as I possibly could, like a small child and not have any second thoughts or second guesses or internal dialogue, anything stopping me from just doing what I felt like an animal would do, like a dog would bark or, you know, a bear would shit in the woods. So uh, that all, the amount of intelligence that divined what was going on in my story, we're talking like 
there were seven years of mega miracles happening, like maybe two a month, five, at least five or six a year, where it's just like, oh my effing God, this is unbelievable, right? And they're, they're all in a pattern, like a, a cloth that's woven. I mean, this story was woven by a goddess There's, and a period, and goddess, period, not what you think might be a goddess, you know, some kind of strange thing that we don't know what it is. It was a freaking goddess because she spoke to me absolutely clearly from inside my soul. Nobody else could have heard it, but she spoke English in a beautiful voice. I'm very angry, Tefnut cooking, and I didn't recognize the word uh, Tefnut. I recognized Tef something, and then I read her name like a month later in a book that I happened to be reading because I happened to be watching Lost, which happened to have Egyptian characters, which Lost I happened to solve and be the only person in the world to solve it. And the goddesses pictures in the show. And I could go on like that for a hundred miracles that all add up to, I am the new age Messiah that I knew like way before this happened, that that's what I was. And then, uh, you know, the, what I'm saying is, is that as far as that little niche of things that I know, I don't need any education or I am not open to theories about what it might be or what it might not be. It is what I say it is, but I don't go beyond what I say. You know, I'm not like a lot of Christians will just make up all this shit. They have secondhand. They believe this, they believe that. And they'll go on, they'll spend their whole life reading this shit over and over and over and over again. I haven't spent, you could put all the time that I spent studying Egyptian shit into a week. You know, I'm not like that. I don't, I don't need to know much more than I know because I know more than almost maybe probably anybody on the freaking planet about any divine being I know. And I don't think, and I don't believe, and I don't trust, and I don't pray, and I don't worship, I don't do any religious stuff, you know? I just know, and I, and I am what I say I am. And I guess uh, so that might be long-winded. What does the New Age Messiah mean, though? You said earlier you don't really know what it means. Uh, I mean, yeah. It has a certain it, connotation when you say Messiah. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, it gives so, people that that impression, like you know, Messiah. Well, yeah, I'm sure see. everybody's everybody's got the idea in their mind of fantastical idiot stories about God knocking up a virgin and shit like that. <laughs> you know, it just it brainwashes people. But why use that need, term? I guess is what I'm saying, the Messiah term. Because, okay, this is I said this last time, but yeah, I sacrificed myself. I said I'm an. I told people online on uh, Newsmax, I'm going down. Watch me. I'm going to, I'm going down in flames because I knew I was going to go down because I knew that all the shit that I wanted to say, if I really said it, I would be fired. I'd be fucked. If I, and all the shit that I wanted to do, if I did it, I'd be fired. I'd be fucked. I'd be, I knew I was going down. Right. But I had, I went down in flames. I mean, I, it was, I'd rather be, what is that? Rolling Stones. I think sorry, better to burn out, better to burn out than fade away or some shit like that. Right. I mean, I burned hot. I was superstar online and had beautiful women, freaking intelligent women who could win on Jeopardy, married to, you know what I mean? It's like superstar type women freaking talking to me all the time. And every woman that had any, got anywhere near me that was fascinated with me. I mean, uh, I mean, I'm overstating it a little bit, but it was, it was the kind of thing that would happen if you could spread your wings and just be exactly what you wanted to be at all times and just be this perfect yourself, this perfect version of yourself. Right. But it didn't last very long because I had like total chinks in my armor and then I went down, down, down. So that was a, a long way to say the reason why I call myself a Messiah because I did sacrifice myself to find something new, right? Then I got fucked over bad. I got put in a black hole by torture and then I found something new. I looked my heart in the mirror and I believe I've suffered longer, more severely than any person in human history. So I suffered, I got tortured, I sacrificed myself, I found something new. Uh, then there was the religious aspect of it. I didn't declare myself a new age Messiah until there was already like a bunch of miracles. And I didn't do it because this is the new age. I didn't believe necessarily at all in the new age or anything like that. It's just like, okay, you read a little bit. There's a song that I loved. Uh, uh, this is the story of the age of Aquarius. You know that song. I love that song. This is like this is the, the age, age of Aquarius. Of Aquarius. Yeah, yeah, the Aquarius. And what's weird is, right? I made this. I made one of my symbols with these three colors: green, purple, and something, something. So I, I go on to YouTube uh, to listen to that song, and the people that sing it are dressed in the same colors as my freaking symbol for looking heart in the mirror, right? So if you go to Everybody, if you're watching, just really get over to uh, 
the Milky Way dot global, the Milky Way dot global. And that's this is like 10 years down the road. MSG underscore enthusiast sent five dollars on Rumble. My revelation and then saying I was the new age Messiah. I thought I need to make a new religion, so I'm gonna call it the Milky Way because the goddess has these milkers and uh it's the way. So the Milky Way dot global is the newest the new so the uh, goddess has world. big titties confirmed. Is that the what you're goddess saying? is knockers. If you look at the freaking art of Egyptian, but I thought you didn't uh, like big titties. <laughs> they're nice, firm, juicy style. <laughs> oh, so no, they're I, like solid. They're not. Fluffy. I'm just talking shit because, but uh, yeah, the, the so so like I had. You like a firm tit, not a soft one. You you know what I mean? Like it's got I some solid. Yeah, when exactly. you grab it, it's, it's it's it doesn't just sink in, right? Like it's just yeah. bloom bloom. Yeah, is that? I'd rather mean? have a tiny tit that doesn't sag than a tit. That's big and sag. I just, the saggy but you like a big tit that's like blam. If you, know you got I mean? nice, got firm, young, tit. yeah, <laughs> yeah, okay. I'd, I'd, if I was if I was to be reincarnated, it would be as a as a bra cup. <laughs> All right, now, now let me ask you this, and i got to get Wayne back in because I, I, I'm trying to get uh, even the time out a little bit. But MSG Enthusiast says, how does the Messiah wish to be worshipped? And that was a super chat there, and thank you, MSG. Well, that's a good question. I, like I said before, I don't worship, I don't pray. I think all that crap that religious people do is dumb. Once you know what a God is and what it can do, you just, I mean, to, to even think, like I used to, okay, I'm spoken to by, by a goddess, I'm, miraculous as hell shit's happened to me and like what do i do about it do i pray no i don't pray at all I, do i do i act all holy or say holy stuff or keep from swearing or be extra like go help the poor or something no i don't i don't help anybody unless it's very convenient you know and then uh i don't do anything like that and i don't my thing that i said before was that like i was talking about all those little uh all those little worker bees that have to make you what you are all the activity that's going on I call that spirit like to me that spirit which you can't see it's invisible it's happening constantly inside your body and and that's spirit and so we are spirit basically what we are is spirit and the worship is going in the direction of us from the creator from the gods goddesses whatever from divine they are worshiping us by the energy that they put into us to enable us to see think act enjoy hate love all those, you know, that's all God energy. Like every single uh, being, whether it's a snake that bites or a crocodile that chomps or a rabbit, it's, you know, soft. Every aspect of every animal on the earth is in our soul. And we're kind of the culmination of everything. Like if there's certain people, if, if I was a crocodile, I'd love to freaking chop their leg off, you know, or if I was a bunny, I'd love to cuddle up next to them. You know, it's like there's different aspects of every right. creature that's built into the human psyche. Uh, and so don't worship anything don't worship me so you don't want to be worshiped that's what you're saying no i'm an idiot you know okay roughly and uh but i did find i did say the most profound words ever spoken which is look your heart in the mirror because everybody looks in the mirror and they get the whole like there's psychiatrists that have determined that the major flaw in human being is to identify with their image in the mirror and so you you have this view of yourself from the outside and so you create a separateness from you and the rest of the world and, and all this stuff. And it all starts with identifying with your image in the mirror, at least according right. to one psychiatrist. And for sure, people do. I mean, they walk they walk around thinking how they look all the freaking time. All right, now, let me let me get Wayne in there, and then I'll ask you. A lot of people are asking about the diameter thing in the golf cart. We'll talk about that in a second. <laughs> we'll have to bring that back up because people keep asking about it again. Uh, now, Wayne, go ahead. I know that was a long bit, but I'm trying to let you both get your, get well, your thoughts out there. I was listening to Jay. And Jay's calling himself a messiah, and I wasn't sure like what kind of messiah. So I actually just went to a Google, and I'm at Wikipedia, and it says a messiah in the Arab, 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 Hamonic religion, um, is a savior or liberator of a group of people. So are you a liberator of people? Are you starting a religion, Jay? Uh, yeah, I do believe I'm a liberator of people and I am starting a religion. And I do think that if my story is made into a movie, uh, the cabal will collapse, the media will collapse, and there will be the type of energy that would create a much more uh, real but reality based world, you know, with truth. Mm -hmm. Like my religion, when I first uh, looked my heart in the mirror and, and was tortured and was laying near death for years, 
my religion was to tell the truth and be the truth and not vary from that no matter what and so i was religiously uh devoted to the truth and and it turned out for me i didn't say a single prayer nothing like that and then i became and then these miracles started happening and then the goddess spoke to me without any religious type crap but yeah uh i do think you know i don't know if it'll happen it should my story should already be a movie i've pitched it Mine to too. producers and stuff yeah whether it happens i don't know yeah well um just to push back a little bit like if you're gonna create your own new religion are you writing your own bible is it a workshop is it a pamphlet um because you know you might you might be on to something and who's to say that the people who wrote the bible even had it correct um i was raised catholic and then i went to catholic school and i drank the jesus kool-aid more like i felt i was forced to and I really didn't really pay much attention to it until about 10 years ago when um, Ancient Aliens, that series was talking about a lot of interesting things like Genesis. And I was like, you know, maybe the Bible is a story of alien visitations. And if I replace the word God with alien, then the Bible starts making more sense that it's just a history account of UFOs coming down, per, um, performing what we would call miracles, but they were just using advanced technology. And uh, they say that new technology when first observed looks like magic. Like if the pilgrims who went, landed on earth 500 years ago showed the Indians a flashlight or an iPhone, that would be seen as magic. And then you, you were talking about like, uh, somehow you were a vehicle or something. And I was thinking about Integrated circuits, the computer chip, like photolithography, like uh, the Pentium computer. If you've ever seen a microscopic close-up view, it looks like a city grid, but it's so microscopic and that itself might have extraterrestrial origins. Like if we, if we, if we look at the history of the integrated circuit, it started a few months after the Roswell crash in August of 47. And we might've got the integrated circuit and fiber optics and some other material science from the Roswell crash. And like a lot, honestly, in my heart, I really believe that we are the, or we're like a, orphans or we were put here on earth from extraterrestrials that extraterrestrials who might look like us are coming to earth in spacecraft that we call UFOs. Some look like us, some look like the gray aliens with the big heads. And, um, you know, I, what is, I think God, I think there is an ultimate creator of the universe. Like, I'm, I don't believe in the Big Bang. I believe in like, like maybe the universe is a donut shape. Like what they call the CIA has a document called the cosmic egg where it looks like a donut and we're inside the donut. In the middle of the donut is a white hole and a black hole, but not the black holes we are referencing from modern uh like Stephen Hawking, I do think there's a sprinkling of black holes all around the universe. And I think black holes are a concentration of positive electricity in the spirit of the electric universe theory that actually planets themselves are negative energy and they, they attract the positive energy and that's how they get powered. But I think sometimes there's an abundance of um, positive energy and concentrations which is creating a magnetic vortex, which exhibits what we observe as a black hole. So they say things go into the black hole, but we don't see them leave. Well, first of all, we're not even there. We're observing them through telescopes at a distance. And maybe a black hole is nothing more than a, a Eisenberg Rosen bridge, a, a time machine or a, a Stargate effect. And it wasn't until just a few years ago, I believed in Stargates after that, that um, Art Bell episode with Madman Micah, but I really do believe that a Stargate is evidence, especially since extraterrestrials through rumor are coming to our solar system outside our solar system, and they're not traveling many light years. It's not taking them years to get here. They're just jumping into our universe. And there's there's uh, stories of things appearing out of nowhere. So I, I really just like a lot of this is super crazy. And thank God that we have the the world of science fiction to baby step us into this really profound thinking that's really outside our realm. We are we are born kind of like 
Well, we don't have knowledge in our brain. Our brain is a transmitter and receiver. And I do believe that powerful forces in the universe, gods or our ancestors are, like I believe our dreams are actually direct messages from people who care about us trying to guide us through life. Um, so we like collectively, we just don't know about any of this stuff. So the more we're open to receiving information, the more we can benefit from information. And anytime we have a closed door to anything, there's there's no chance of you receiving a message. And so a closed minded person isn't changing the world. I'm not saying you're closed minded, Jay. I'm just saying in general that the more we're open to new ideas and new thinking, can we make progress into the unknown world of advanced technology? Thank you. All right, and you're welcome. Go ahead, Jay. First off, are you writing a, a Bible or, or a book uh, for your religion? Uh, and then any thoughts on on what Wayne said there? And then we'll get to the, to the other part I was going to bring back up because people really want to hear more about that. But go ahead. Um, anyway, I was so. yeah, like I was tortured, so I have a really hard time doing anything that uh, requires stream of consciousness. I was a very good writer before, and I can write decent now. And I could potentially write when I get enlightened, I might have like, you know, really good skills with saying things the way people need to hear them. Like one time I wrote uh, on Godlike Productions, I wrote because of something I experienced myself, right? I said, it's always right now. Uh, or no, yeah, you are your, it's always right now. And you are your experience right now. That's all you will ever be or have in reality is your experience right now basically i didn't say that but i said you are it's always right now you are ex your experience right now that's all you ever will ever be or have in reality so a couple of people wrote oh my god i just fuck you just blew my mind it changed my life and i was like dude i'm freaking tortured barely alive i can barely freaking think and uh i'm that's pretty cool you know and that's i had that at a radio head concert it's always right now you know i just i experience like the universe as it really is rather than through the lenses that we acquire uh for a brief period at the radio head concert and uh and i wrote that from that and i could have great things to write in the future but right now i don't all i have is facts a story actual miracles uh impossible to discredit and a magic type revelation look your heart in the mirror which blew my mind and you know maybe for nobody else it'll blow their mind right but even if it doesn't blow your mind even if you don't do what i did which is look at my heart in the mirror close my eyes go down inside find my heart feel the inner child say this is me and trick my mind the way it usually thinks that's me the in the mirror i say this is me instead of that's me and then blah, massive freaking rush the shit from the guy sending bit saying bend over i'll drive right my guts were just yeah no, so also, uh, real quick, before we get into that, I see uh, Pat Paulson, and I'll fix the pass-through. I don't know why it stopped, but I'll, I'll fix that because it resets sometimes on Rumble. But um, he says, does the goddess have a nice ass? Um, that was uh, <laughs> going back to our previous discussion there. I don't know if you know. Um, I'm assuming yes, but. <laughs> I'm sure uh, in her human form she's well actually she the picture of her now here's the deal right her name was tefnut or tefnut uh depending on how you pronounce it i'll give her and a then, tefnut. go ahead and then, and, then, and then and then at some point atum the creator changed her name to mott which is the famous uh ruler of all the gods and goddesses or your feather your soul is weighed against her feather and the mott picture is a beautiful goddess with wings but the picture of tefnut is not beautiful this is a lion face i mean sorry lion face is not pretty and uh i was kind of disappointed when i saw yeah, her i'm not into the like, furry stuff yeah but anyway i was on. like damn it man i wanted to have like a beautiful face. but the pictures of uh the goddess that i've seen of mott then it is i mean it's weird because it's a bird mixed with a person but it's it's pretty uh anyway I don't know what she looks like because I've never seen her, but uh, just to be straight and square on that. Um, going back to what Wayne was saying about religion and stuff, I uh, I am making new, the religion is already made. It's, you know, it's already there. The Milky Way Global is like, it's a very small website. It's a very small concept, but it's real as a fact and, you know, it doesn't require me to write anything 
because what it does is it wipes everything else out to my in my opinion like he was talking about the bible and everybody this is like the stretch that everybody almost no matter what carte blanche every person on earth at least in our western world tries to make the bible significant in one way or another and i say it's not significant in any way that a bunch of guys dreamed up this idea and the way that i believe that most emphatically is because all the miracles are ridiculous stupid crap when you've experienced real miracles you know that that crap that they say was this god doing something is not the way god operates god operates in very subtle ways to communicate to individuals on a personal level and it, occasionally perhaps there might be something happen but the way that that story and the miracles were woven into mine i mean no one else would have ever known that anything that happened along the way was a miracle right i mean they they i sued the guy on 9 11 or on uh Pearl Harbor Day. Then they deposed me on Valentine's Day. Then the guy, uh, his attorney on June 5th, 2006 says he'll be in my office tomorrow, which was 666. Then they went after me in court on 9-11 and fucked me over. You know, it's just, they just boom, boom, boom. And it's like everybody else sitting in that room had no freaking idea that there was just a miracle occur. And I tell my father, my uh, dad, he's like, and this is after other miracles, not just those. And he's like, what miracles? You know, what miracles? <laughs> so everybody is kind of a dunderhead about that and they think a miracle is uh god walk, uh, jesus walking on water or turning fish into you know turning two loaves of bread into a feast for five thousand is just that's what they think of and they think the messiah is born of a virgin and and you know rising from the dead and all this crap that's just no i'm a human being human beings are responsible for everything that exists on earth unless it's a god or a goddess and in that way we take back from the ridiculous fairy tales about, for example, uh, God that are written for us, and we take back to the human level, but not exercising, and I'm talking about like the exorcists, not exercising the gods and goddesses, but accepting that the that they are 100% beyond us, and have we have no influence whatsoever on what they do. You know, they just do what they're going to do if it's anything if anything i mean they constantly like i say they worship they worship the creation is worshiped by the creator that all that energy is from the creator and constant and the egyptian uh the egyptian theology that i read was that the creation is nothing other than the creator and i that that matches my motto which is weird you know you just i make this motto reality is god right and then uh when I get tortured and I'm laying near death, I uh, find this book called The Inner Journey Home. And I just, I kind of, I'm in the bookstore looking for books and I kind of go to the back and the guy's thesis is that reality is God, right? So I'm like, okay, this is a book for me. It's about a, you know, three inch thick book. So I get that book that says uh, reality is God and it's freaking totally helps me. It's like, I just, I devoured that book for like a year. I read it every day constantly and uh, you know, the whole thing pans out to where my theory in the beginning was correct correct is that reality is god and the creation is the creator and somehow though there are still gods and goddesses that do stuff you know at least there's right. one goddess for sure okay Bubble. so, so yeah. now before i kick it back to wayne a lot of people you know i see the comments in chat they, they're talking about the, the golf cart. They're talking about the, the nine-inch diameter. The, the line that you gave on the show last time got a lot of attention uh, in a lot of places that follow my show. Haters and lovers alike um, were – their interest was piqued when you, when you talked about that part of the story. So I would be remiss not to have you touch upon it again. Yeah, so I'll just for Wayne, I'll tell like Wayne for this is just a part of the story, right? So this guy, uh, I met this. I was in real estate after getting fired from a couple jobs. I go into real estate. I'm flying high in real estate, so doing major stuff. You know, meet this guy who's a super genius. He does the development. I sell him a million dollar property. He decides to build a lake. Uh, I buy, I find property to put his lake on, right? I set up the deal for him, you know, 250 houses around a man-made lake and it's, <clears throat> I'm going to be a multimillionaire, right? But the guy starts torturing me. Uh, he's, my girlfriend is in love with him. He tells me he's going to fuck her in a way that you would think you would attribute to somebody who is kind of demonic or, you know, I'm going to fuck her. And then, uh, 
I like kind of let that ride. I'm like, she's not going to fuck it. You're an asshole. Right. And then uh, I get in his car on a typical day. He leans back in his seat. Yeah. Suck my dick. I'm like, you got to give me. And then I just ignore it and we go on. And then he comes and we're sitting, I'm sitting in the office, uh, in his office with him and he licks his lips. Looks me in the eyes, you know, bolt straight in the eyes. And then he's like, same thing in the car. <laughs> he's just doing this. He's doing this shit constantly to remind me that I'm going to suck his dick and shit like that, right? And he's my girlfriend's in love with him. And he tells me I'm going to fuck her. And he says, I got nine inches with diameter. <laughs> and so, like, I get, and then and finally, like, my girlfriend just can't get enough of the guy. It's just, I'm freaking in tortured hell already. He's telling me to suck his dick. We're working on a million dollar, multi, 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 multi million dollar real estate deal that's going to blow the minds of everybody in our freaking community, which is, you know, 100,000 people or whatever. It's going to be the biggest deal in the whole freaking county, in the whole state for five years, probably the biggest thing, right? And I'm the guy that set it up. And I made these guys a million dollars on the first deal I showed them. But uh, we're, I'm, I'm in the golf cart with the guy. And, uh, I go, I'm driving the golf cart and I go into the woods to take a piss and I come back and he says, whip it out. And I'm sitting there. This is after he's going to fuck my girlfriend, after he sucked my dick, after he licks his lip. I'm still with him because we we're best friends before that for like two years, right? Wait, and wait, then, who did uh, the dick sucking? Wait, wait, sorry. I, but, no, he said suck my dick. Oh, okay, I didn't okay. ever. Oh, suck okay, right, right, Nobody right, sucked right. any dick. Okay, okay. No dick. I, I no just dick clear. All right, you just, he constantly rising that. His girlfriend, that. his girlfriend got me on the phone and she's like, she's, he's like trying to get me to fuck his girlfriend. Right. And she's like, how big is your dick or how, how big is your cock or some shit like that. His girlfriend's asking me how big my dick is. Right. Anyway. Uh, so that's just the way he, that's the way he rolled is, you know, everything was about dicks and fucking and everything. So, uh, anyway, we're, uh, we're in the golf cart in the middle of nowhere, all by ourselves. He tells me to whip it out. I'm freaking terrified. I'm in kind of like a frozen state and then he gets in his deep voice and he says uh bend over i'll drive and so my head because i'm in this reality is god thing reality so i imagine what he really meant by that in my mind and uh i see this nine inch big thick dick ramming me as fast and hard as it can raping me ass raping me <laughs> in my mind's eye and the freaking shit creates this actual liberal literal black hole in my soul uh there's like for a while there around easter i remember i was like uh it was when paul mccartney was in the super bowl maybe it wasn't easter but you know the things kind of happened around the same year time frame there was like a hammer uh you know like a when you get on the street and you got that thing <laughs> his dick and this is like a year later his dick is freaking hammering inside my head <laughs> and i and i lived and i still have like massive uh, convulsive type freaking uh there is a literal black hole in my soul and uh anyway that that is what put me down it took like it was like a snow globe the consciousness or whatever there was a black hole and then my consciousness just gradually flowed down and i felt death when he said that i felt death like you see your my best buddy from high school, me and him driving around. Uh, the memory of that, you know, it was like a sweet memory. It went in my mind, like two seconds later, death, or, you know, death just completely overtook me, the feeling of dying. And uh, I just thought, how will I ever recover from this, right? And then, uh, and then I, after the, like, a, I don't know, a year after that, I looked my heart in the mirror and I had this, oh, this could change the world. And, uh, it took me a week to remember I was on a mission in the first place, right? Because I was so deep buried in suffering and, and you just can't imagine the suffering and the weakness and the crippling. But uh, then all the stuff from my life from childhood just starts to figure out, oh my gosh, this was a whole pattern and it all makes sense now. My Everything about me from, I'll tell you one little last story. It's, it's on my uh, Twitter. Uh, go ahead so I can let Wayne get in there, but go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, it's on my Twitter. So maybe somebody's read it, but it's on my uh, pin tweet. So I go to spring break from college, right? I had a dream when I was a little boy that I went to Florida. I flew, I could fly. I'm in, I'm in my uh, childhood. I dream of flying. And somehow I dream of flying to Florida and I hit this warm beach because I'm in South Dakota and it's freezing cold winter. Right. So I have this dream from childhood and uh, there's a little thing in college in Minnesota. There's a cut thing, go to spring break, Daytona beach. 
for 200 and something bucks, you get the motel and everything, get on a bus, go to Daytona Beach. So I'm, ask, I'm broke, I asked my dad, can you give me to, so I barely make it to Daytona Beach, but I do make it to Daytona Beach, right? And uh, I get there and I have a little weed and shit, and like I need to buy some groceries so I don't have to buy like from hot dog stands and stuff and spend like a bunch of money. So I put the groceries in the fridge and the uh, head of lettuce, right? And I go and have just the hell of the time spring break. It's like eight days or whatever, it's yeah. over. I didn't touch the lettuce. So I'm on the sixth floor of the motel and there's a swimming pool down below with a grandstand and they're having a belly flop contest. And I'm, I'm getting ready to leave. I mean, the bus is out there. They're like, everybody, you know, I got my bags back and ready to go. I got this lettuce. I'm leaving in freaking 30 minutes or, you know, the bus is leaving in 10 minutes or whatever, you know? So I walk to the balcony, there's a belly flop contest and I have this head of lettuce and I was a quarterback and a catcher, right? And I freaking hmm. whip that sucker as uh, lettuce as hard as I can down in the pool. And I hide behind the balcony. And when I pull my head up, the freaking lettuce comes up as like a lily pond. Like all the lettuce tore off from the core of the, and it all freaking rose up in the freaking pool, right? So that's the thematic thing that would begin the movie. That's what I'd like to start this, the movie with is that scene is the thematic thing is that I threw my soul the same way at the world that I threw the lettuce at the pool and it freaking got plunged and torn to shreds and then rose, you know, in this beautiful thing and people were astounded and all this shit. And, and in my dream, this is this is the last thing I'll say, is my yeah. dream is that somebody was sitting there will go to the movie by chance and see that freaking scene and be like, I was there. And if that happens, my whole life will happen. <laughs> that will be the big deal. The culmination. Somebody who's right. sitting there sees the movie. Now, Wayne your thoughts on well jay i'm i'm sorry to hear some of that story it sounds like you were actually sexually assaulted by that that business partner if you were working at a company um that would be sexual assault you would be fired that's sexual harassment and um he didn't expose himself to you but it was a type of verbal abuse no that's if illegal you... what he did i told the cops i sued him they committed perjury buying the land i mean they were evil sons of bitches and i wrote even the real estate company uh that the lake was going to be a psychologically impacted property because it's shaped like a snake <laughs> in a town that was famous for devil worship and, the, and that was before the 666 shit happened right <clears throat> so i mean it's you know when all this stuff comes together and it all unfolds and people see it for what it really is it'll freaking blow the freaking doors off the whole freaking world you know i'm talking i mean he I, definitely crossed the line when he <laughs> said when he said that he wanted to have sexual relations with your uh your girlfriend and then he was using a type of hypnosis for sexual dominance yeah and um you know if you're ever in that situation again you just got to divorce yourself <laughs> from that I ain't environment. Gonna be in that situation <laughs> yeah so i'm sorry that happened to you um well it made me the new age messiah yeah um i know you don't believe that nobody does it's okay <laughs> No. Doesn't matter to me. About it. Wait. I mean, if people are stupid enough to believe in Jesus, they're not going to be smart enough to believe in the New Age Messiah. I'm not sure I believe in Jesus. Well, I don't believe in Jesus. That's why I was willing to convert over to Judaism because <laughs> with Judaism, they're waiting for the Messiah to come. Yeah. And in my world of uh, aliens and technology, what that really means is our Messiah will come to the earth in a UFO and uh, a being will, will come out of the UFO with magical powers and provide some type of miracle for the earth so we're not living in the current state we are. Um, but this is just, in a way, it's like these people who, the science fiction buffs who like Star Trek and all these other science fiction movies and they go to, they go to conventions and they de they dress up in the costumes like the movie Galaxy Quest, which makes fun of Star Trek and Star Trek or Trekkies, and they they follow them around at conventions and they they parrot back things they said in the movie. Well, that's kind of like religion. It's just like people who are fans of TV shows and their whole life revolves around just a few summers of watching reruns, and they never grew up. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure if re I, I think religion is a guidance tool life on earth is very short and there are a group there's a somebody was always going to control the world and it was probably never us that's what i tell myself like now wayne, somebody's going to be in charge of the world and it's not me wayne would would you be willing to go through these types of trials and tribulations in order to possibly reach enlightenment reach messiah status or 
is it too well, much? I'm not. I don't think of myself as a messiah. A messiah is, well, I am a politician. So a politician is a person who is saying, "I will help change things for you." Here's my long-term plan, and if you vote for me, I'm going to bring these ideas to life. So I'm a I'm a glorified project manager. Um, it's not about me; it's about my ideas, and my ideas are translated to you so clearly that if I wasn't around, people could still say, "Well, let's say I died." People could still say, "Even though Wayne's dead, he wrote down his ideas, and we can still accomplish these ideas." Um, like I've got a ridiculous amount of campaign promises, things like to abolish the Federal Reserve, to get rid of a private bank making our money. Like where did they get the money from? Well, they pulled it out of thin air. Then they charge us interest on the money, like roughly 3% per year as inflation. And it's just, it's just really, we're living in this really manufactured kind of evil world. I will say maybe in a positive note, if it wasn't for central banks, lying to us would we have this global interconnected synchronized economy with the internet we might not have because where would the venture capital have come from during the industrial revolution and prior to world war ii like wars are um hotbeds of te technological innovation they're they're a, a fast tracking of we need to do something because if we don't we're gonna die because of war. Take the Manhattan Project and just other things. They've been fast tracked because of war. And I, the the way I see America today is we should be in a financial cataclysm because we've printed so much money and the stock market should be crashing if we actually followed the laws of economics. But the laws of economics don't have a chapter called manipulation by the central bank. And the central bank is not following the laws. They're operating outside the laws. And so I do think we're going to transition to a wartime economy. And we're going to, that's going to justify additional spending, which is hyperinflation. And we're not going to have a stock market crash because if we had a crash, uh, those million dollar homes, which are worth 300,000, would be back at 300 grand. And then the, the cities wouldn't be able to pay the police two and $300,000 a year salaries. So we're just going to just, Keep it, keep it going. In Sun Tzu Art of War, Sun Tzu Art of War, it talks about besieging a city. So you can surround a city, you can starve them, then you can start to attack them, and then you can destroy the whole city. And it says it's better to leave a society intact than to destroy it. And that is the point we are at financially in America. It would be better to leave our economy intact than to destroy it. We could bankrupt probably more than 50% of the baby boomers and they'd all be homeless. And then the banks would own those properties and then they would be on the market at fair market rates for somebody to buy them. But that would put the economy back 10 or 20 years before we ever got to the state of completion where we are right now. So it's better to leave it intact than to head right in to a, a manufactured war with Russia. And uh, I'll say a little sidebar, but still along these lines, there was there's been some talks like, it wouldn't be so bad if we had a, a few nuclear bombs going off. It could it could be the cure for global warming. So this like New York Times article was trying to justify a few nuclear exchanges to create a nuclear winter with so much ash and dust in the air to block out the sunlight to cook, to aid us in global nah. cooling. So I'm like, are these these fuckers are just trying to justify nah. a global war? All right. Uh, now back to you, Jay. First off, you can follow up on that, but also, is this guy still out there with the diameter and all that? Like, do you think he's still trying to? Yeah, prey he's, on people? He, I seen him. Uh, he has an ad on uh, Craigslist. He's he was a uh, he he's a uh, contractor. He the uh, Seattle Mariners Stadium. He put all the infrastructure in there with. So he's rich, you know. Yeah. Well, he's he makes a lot of money and then spends it and then. Uh, they did go belly up on the lake, the man-made lake. Uh, the market crashed right when they got it built, and uh, they didn't sell a fucking thing for long enough to say we'll give it back to the bank. <laughs> it's all pretty much built out now, but uh, he had a ad on Craigslist for delivering gravel, 
like he used to build roads and stuff. So I seen his ad. He's still around. I, I used to see him in his car because it was a car that you would notice, but I don't know what he's driving now. I used to see him no. at the bar. I stepped on his toes and, you know, he was with his buddies and I put a devil horns like this. <laughs> and I, freaking, I put my hands on his throat and, you know, shit like that. Uh, within, you know, recent proximity of him torturing me, I I wouldn't touch him now. I wouldn't go anywhere near him or I would avoid him at all costs. But uh, for a while there, I was confronting him because I was buff and I could have kicked his ass, you know. But anyway. Now, Wayne has a connection with Craigslist. I don't know if you knew that or not. Uh, I don't know nothing. Wayne, well, tell him about it. Well, this is a little while ago, but I'm the founder of a, the second image host, uh, hosting service on Earth called Image Deposit, which was exclusive for Craigslist. And between the years of 2023 and 2013, I ran Image Deposit. And then there was something called Erotic Services, which was one of the biggest users of my image hosting service. So I inadvertently hosted like 99% of all the prostitute photos in America for 10 years. And uh, it got well, no a lot wonder, of attention from the FBI. No wonder you're and, into Judaism. <laughs> uh, no, I, I like Jews because they're practicing the principles of the Ten Commandments that Christians don't seem to want to follow. Um, I like Jews because they'll speak a truth even if it's not comfortable, where Christians will... No, they, won't, a, they won't say what's on their mind. That was just a I joke. I mean, I'm making generalities here. I, that was just Christians a joke because of the recent news about the Jews own all the porn and the freaking Rabbi Shmuley in the news. That's a big story, that freaking Rabbi Shmuley sure. going, going but, after but Candace. Who are the consum- but who are the consumers of the porn? Christians. Like, people oh, yeah. put the Jews down for running the banking system. Well, maybe that's true. I think they do. There's nothing starting stopping Christians from creating a Christian bank and overnight, Christians could all start using the Christian bank, and then the Jewish banks would be out of business. Like, any Christian could start a bank, and then over time, the Christians would bank with the Christians and leave the Jews alone. Now, we had a guest so, yesterday quit. who said the banks are actually run by Nazis and not Jews. <laughs> well, maybe, but if quit giving it. If you don't like somebody, don't give them your money. If you don't like Hollywood, don't give Hollywood your money. But I got to see the new Lord of the Rings movie. No, you don't. You can get the Lord of the Rings on DVD from the library for free in a few months. So just like vote with your dollars. Um, that's all. Like, like if you want to run the world, well, why don't you get a master's or a doctoral degree and then fight like hell to get that job where you're competing against other Jews who, who have got the same education as you. And then as a Jew with a doctoral degree, you're going to be working seven days a week uh, 365 days a year. These people don't know how to take a day off. They don't know how to relax. Um, a lot of Jews have anxiety. Um, they're just anxious people. They're they're just driven to do something except relax. All right. So, you know the the saying the meek will inherit the earth. There's a lot of there's a lot of joy in that. I, I like embrace doing nothing. Embrace having. Embrace minimalism. Embrace a lifetime of like failure, like quit trying to achieve stuff. You're like a man on his deathbed never says, I wish I worked more. Often money costs too much. Now I am the founder of howtogetrich.com. I've owned it like 26 years. I'm not wealthy anymore. And pursuing money will ruin your life. Like if you pursued relaxation, spirituality, camping, fishing, you probably had a better life than most millionaires. But you need money to eat. I got food stamps. Checkmate, I have to say. Uh, now, but like they call it, they call it burden maxing. Like even this, <laughs> my my rabbi, my my rabbi says like he gives a story of like when you're a parent and you tell your child, well, you got to clean your room. Well, why? Or you got to go to school. Well, why? Well, if you don't go to school, you're not going to get an education, and you're going to grow up, and you're going to be homeless. And if you're homeless, you might die, and you won't have food. He says, but that's not true. Because if you're homeless and you're hungry, we give you food. So, like, society provides for the poor. Um, I don't know. Okay, fair enough. Uh, any follow-up on that, Jay? No, I just wanted to tell a little joke. I, didn't, I mean, we could talk for eight years about that stuff. This is freaking... It was in the news, you know, the... the uh, 
Rabbi Shmuley and Candace Owens sing to me. Yeah, yeah, that. And then that other, what's that other one? The girl, uh, Samira Khan posted about uh, that girl that's doing the noodling. Did you see that one? Uh, oh, uh, I saw her. You, you're talking about the video where she's making fun of that girl's accent or, or the tweet? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Everybody on freaking Twitter is commenting. On, I've never seen any. That's the most she was getting roasted. She was getting I've dragged. I've ever seen in my life. That is freaking Yeah, she was getting dragged because the girl was from the South, and she was cute, and she was, like, building her house or whatever, but she had a Southern accent. Of course, I have one, too, because I'm from the South. Hers was a lot thicker than mine, though. Um, and Samir Khan said, this is the worst accent. This girl yeah, is, should be You're illegal. attracted to this girl. You're gay and whatever. It's exactly. And, and the girl was she's a freaking much sweetheart. more attractive a, than her. Yeah. She's about the sweetest thing you could see ever see in America. And then like this, I don't know what she is, Pakistani or Lebanese or something. It's like say it, she's a disaster and her actions should be illegal and she's not feminine. And any man who loves her thinks she's hot as a gay and wants yeah. a wants a tomboy and take your country back. <laughs> no, it's, now, what do you I think swear. of gays? You talking to me? Yeah. Uh, they creep me out. All I don't, I get turned on by lesbians when they're hot, you know, but uh, seeing anything homo just makes me sick. That doesn't mean I have a moral thing about it. I think it's obviously it's not natural in the sense of like, natural intelligence you're not going to populate the earth i don't think you have hormonal desire for gay sex uh a lot of people say it's you know hormonal or that it's something like love i don't think it's anything to do with love i don't think it's anything to do with romance i think it has nothing to do with marriage and all that should be reserved to man woman couples and stuff you know but you can't do anything about it i wish it didn't exist you know at least gay sex i wish it just simply didn't exist but it does and what you do about it. I had rented rooms while I was uh, tortured. My landlord let me uh, rent rooms and I had this guy come and he's gay, right? He sits on the couch <laughs> and I'm like sitting there thinking I'm not supposed to be prejudiced against this guy, but he's making me sick, right? So I let him move in and uh, you he, still moved out the next, he moved out the next day because he's just, he could sense I couldn't stand him. <laughs> but anyway. I, I can't stand it when I and they say like when a man sees another man kissing, you know, when a man looks at two men kissing it, the same uh, psychological or, you know, whatever response is it when they see like maggots and it uh, I get the same feeling. And when they when they have kids like that, Glenn Greenwald is married to another man and has kids and that Pete Bud Gedge, all that crap. It's to me, it's a little less, but almost as horrible as men pretending to be women and competing against women in sports and even like beating the women up and wrestling or, you know, slamming a volleyball and breaking their nose and shit, you know, men, it's just, it's really to the point where the world is so fucked up that you, you just really have a hard time dealing with the fact that you're living in the same world with these people. At least I do. It's like, Oh my God, you know, so that's my basic position. That's fucked up in the head. You know? Now, what about you, Wayne? <laughs> what do you think of the guys? I don't have any thoughts about the gays. Like, uh, <laughs> um, like if they want to have all the gay sex, yeah, keep it to yourself. Like, you know, maybe animals in the wild are having gay sex right this minute. A couple lions butt fucking each other in Africa, <laughs> and we wouldn't know it, right? Not, why would it bother us if we didn't know? And I do believe that <laughs> gays are born. Gays are born that way. Like, like uh, when did you when did you realize you were straight, Wayne? Like. Forever, like I just think of myself as straight, and probably like gay people think of themselves as gay. I think so they do, they're yeah. just born that way. That's the way their brain is wired. And uh, there's something. There's a book called "The Man Who Tastes Sounds," and there's <laughs> a condition with the brain called synesthesia. And synesthesia is where, like, you see the alphabet in colors, and basically there's a neurological miswiring. And it's not necessarily a miswiring, it's just a wiring. And it's not fair to say that gays are bad or and straights are good. It just is the way it is. Um, they're just, you know, the way I believe it, and what I like about being a Jew is, it, I have the freedom to not feel responsible for anything because God put me on this earth. I didn't ask to be born. 
God put me here for a reason. And if my life's not going the way I want it to go, that's okay because God chose for me to be on this path. If he wants me to do something, then he's going to present to me information or an opportunity for me to go on his path. Uh, I have my own ideas of what I'm going to do, but it doesn't necessarily mean that that's what God wants me to do. So it's probably a, a very simple system for me to not have responsibility in life and just blame God for everything. And I actually, that works for me because previously I was trying to control my life and control the direction of everything I was doing. And, and I wasn't getting the results I wanted. Like, you know, with a bow and arrow, you're trying to hit the target in the middle, but maybe God doesn't want you to hit the target. He wants your arrows to go to the edge of the target. Like, who cares? Like, life is so short. Um, you know, I think just being a good being a good person, try to do the right thing. I think that the the Bible, the Ten Commandments are a good framework for living a life less fucked up. If you're selfish, if you harm others, you're going to bring a lot of misery upon you. Uh, the gays don't bother me because I'm not gay. They're over <laughs> there doing whatever they're doing. And uh, like literally sell crap to the gays. They I got think we know what they're doing, Wayne. Uh... Yeah, like lots of butt sex, but lots of endless blowjobs, but like <laughs> they've got no children, okay? They got two jobs, two incomes, no children. They can buy a lot of things instead of buying stuff for children. So sell them stuff if you want. Make money off the gays. I don't know. <laughs> it, it just doesn't bother me. Lesbians, they don't bother me as long as they're just minding their own business. Now, if they come over to my house, they're like, Wayne, you know, have you thought about sucking some dicks? Like, I don't <laughs> have those conversations. Like, leave me alone. You go live your life. I'm going to live my life. So you're fine as long as they don't push their homosexuality on you. That's right. Keep it in the bedroom, which they can't. They're like, they, they can't, gotta can they? The, no, they can't. They got to, like, us straight people don't have a have to, we don't have to have a parade. <laughs> there used to be a TV show, Will and Grace, and uh, Woody Harrelson was one of the actors, and he was saying, we're straight, we date, we mate, get over it. <laughs> like, straight people don't have to go around uh, prof uh, prophesizing how straight they are. It's pretty weird that they got to tell everybody that they're gay. It's more like a marketing campaign. It's it's like, it's not necessary. But, but also, if you need a fucking parade to feel happy about yourself, let's give these fuckers a parade <laughs> so they don't steal and rape your children. Like if, no. if that's keeping them from committing mass murder, if <laughs> that lets them blow parade, up the steam the so they don't rape children. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay. listen, like give me a parade or we're going to rape and we're going to rape your children. Okay. You get a parade, but leave the kids alone. Like if it, if it comes down to a negotiation, the only way to make these people feel accepted is for them to have a parade and, you know, be naked and twerking down Main Street. Let them do it. Like, like if it we, keeps the kids safe, we need to go hunting, and we need to put on camouflage and go into the bush and be quiet and shoot deer. They're like, that's pretty gay. <laughs> now, have you ever had a, a gay try to push their gayness on you? Yeah, I get picked up on gay people all the time. No way. Um, I lived in a town called Guerneville in Northern California, about seventy-five miles north of San Francisco. And it's like, it's about 50% gay people. It's a gay recreation place. And there was like a two straight bars and two gay bars. And as a straight man, when I first moved there, I was like, this is going to be great for me because I'm a straight dude. And there's going to be a bunch of women. Com women often complain because I, I lived in San Francisco and they're like, it's so hard to find a straight guy. Because they automatically assume that if you're a good looking man, that you're gay. So once the women know that you're straight, then you know, maybe it's some sex for them. So, but what was happening in the town, well, there wasn't many available women to begin with. However, the town has a lot of bridal showers. So women come to the town to have like a bridal shower or a wedding and they, they don't want to get picked up on by straight guys like me. So they go to the gay bar where it's safe. But I was going to the gay bar to pick up on the straight women who were trying to avoid me. So they'd be playing pool. I'm playing bull, pool with them, and I'd be flirting with them. They're like, you're straight? I'm like, yeah, well, what are you doing at a gay bar? I said, I'm here to pick up on you. <laughs> Sometimes it psychology. works. Yeah. Yeah. Um, going undercover. Then other people are like, maybe you weren't going undercover, Wayne. Maybe you're a bone smoker. I'm like, no, I'm just not. <laughs> I'm not afraid of gay guys. Like, if I wanted to suck some dicks, I'd be sucking dick. It's not my thing. 
Now, you're not a bone smoker, Jay. Uh, I saw some people in chat trying to accuse you of that. Um, and <laughs> and also, uh, you can respond to that too, but also, um, have you, uh, well, we, you talked about your, par- your partner doing those things or, or trying to come on to your whatever, however you would classify that, but have you had any other examples of gays trying to push the, their gayness on you? Oh, the guy was tor- the guy was torturing me. He wasn't coming on to me. He was just, you know, he was he never mental took- torture. Yeah, yeah, he was psychologically torturing me. Um, he is in a position of dominance and just knew he could get away with it. And just see what would happen. I don't know. I don't think he knew that he would cripple me, but uh, or that the visualization of what he said would cripple me or had any idea. And, but anyway, uh, I've had several gays try to, in fact, at Daytona Beach smoking bowl with a couple guys and they're like you know don't you want to try and you know i don't know some weird saying that you would say to somebody like wouldn't you like to try to see what it's like and, mm-hmm. and then i had a guy i was in a church and he uh i gave him a ride home or something he says can i suck your dick and you know you know they come on to you mm-hmm. and then I, I was riding carpooling with a guy to work and he was openly gay and i'm like i don't care if you're openly gay i'll carpool with you except he put his hand on mine in the car. And it's just like, I felt this filth, just this disgust, you know, where a buddy of mine in high school beat the shit out of some guy that came out of him in a car, you know, and almost killed him. And I guess South Dakota, you know, we're kind of that way that, you know, you're raised that way is just anything foreign. You just, you don't go there, you know, it's like, and, and like he was talking about kind of, it is like until they became, outrageous in their demonstrations and shit i didn't really bother you just like okay he's gay whatever you know he's just kind of like they're a joke to you as a person it's like they're they're a freaking joke and that was as far as it ever went he didn't hate him he didn't do this just like that guy's freaking femi he acts all freaking like a pussy or whatever you know and it's just a joke and you just didn't say much about it it's just maybe you make fun of him at a party or something having a beer <laughs> but it was not hate and there was never hate there's disgust when you see it and everything but it's a different i think hate would be like what i feel for uh israel when they bomb palestine i hate him <laughs> and i hate that they uh persuade so many people that they're defending themselves and shit like that and and i hate when christians talk like they know what the fuck they're talking about i mean hate has to do with more of a uh there's something different with homosexuality it's gross but i don't hate the people i just you know i would rather they didn't demonstrate their shit and i'd rather they didn't co-opt marriage and call it's not marriage i mean marriage the word implies two different things hooking together you know it's like it's not two of the same and you know it's a different word and they need to have different laws for in my opinion if there even is any laws i'm not like making like hardcore statements or anything it's just that's just my it's not a topic I give much of a shit about, but that's the basic way that I see it. <clears throat> All right. Now, if you have any... I got something uh, to say. Wait, hold on. Wait, I'm, wait, wait, wait. I'm going to let you get in. But if you have any questions you want to get in for these two, we're heading heading towards the final stretch um, with these two. So if you have any questions, powerchat.live slash the Ralph Retour, Rumble Rants, Kick Subs, and then you can send in a question after that. Just type it in the chat. Um, dollar sign sunsets go out on cash app any of those options um, now go ahead Wayne you said you had something to say well I'm sorry Jay I'm sorry that you had to endure basically sexual harassment in a public setting and I would say that these people are um, it's a type of sexual harassment just apply the labor laws you can't have if, if the conversation that's about to happen involves anything to do with sex like when is it appropriate to talk about sucking dicks at work or have you ever wanted to suck some dicks like there's no business environment where having a conversation about sucking some dicks or did you ever want to suck some dicks or uh, do you want some fingers in your ass like there's no business situation like boss i got some feedback on this month's objectives and it reminds me of a story of a finger in my butt no, you just, that's just never going to happen. <laughs> There's just no sexual conversations in the business world. So if you're in an environment where somebody's going down a path of sexual conversation, you say, listen, I don't want to engage in this sexual conversation. Please stop it or else I'm going to leave. Now, if you sit there and you start, you continue to consume their sexual advances, 
well then actually you're kind of at fault because you god gave you legs to walk away you can just walk away and just never talk to those people again mm. so um and it's totally inappropriate what they're doing and it is a type of assault and uh but if you continue to allow yourself to be an, an assaulted well there's something weird going on like maybe a stockholm syndrome that you've got empathy for the people who are abusing you and um like i was a i was sexually assaulted by a best friend of like 21 years and um wait, wait, wait. I, we were watching who? my friend chick i was at his house watching a movie wait, it was wait, the wait. night I, I my old landlord was evicting me and i went to his house in san francisco like 80 miles away and I needed his help to calm down the other landlord. And uh, he's like, Wayne, suck my dick. And I turned around and he had his dick in my face. I, and uh, I ended up getting up and leaving and I didn't talk to I him for months. And, I don't and we you. just don't, we don't necessarily talk so much anymore because I guess not. Um, he, he's, oh, he's, he's, he's not gay, but he wants to have gay conversations. And as far as I'm concerned, that's pretty gay, you know? I'm not asking other men to suck my dick. Uh, I'm not. I'm not suggesting that we have butt sex like he's suggesting. So I'm like, dude, why don't you? You're like, you're so close to the Castro, and you love alcohol. Why don't you just go to the, some of the gay bars and you can have all the gay butt sex you want? But don't have that conversation with me. Just go two miles over there. Now wait, did did he ever bring that up again, or did it come up in conversation oh, yeah, like he what can't he did? Stop himself. He keeps he trying to have sex himself. with you. Or like, what, what does he bring it yeah, up? Yeah, like, no, this no. Is... He, he's fantasy. He, he has deep fantasies of gay sex with everybody. He, the best jokes to him are gay jokes. He loves a good gay joke. Well, it didn't sound he, like he was joking. He, he had his dick gay. out. Like, what the fuck? Um, yeah, his dick was out. You know, like it looked like a small roll of nickels with some gray <laughs> hair. <on. laughs> uh, like I'm like this guy's broken. He's just he's just like. He's basically a closeted gay guy who is not out there sowing his 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 oats in some guy's ass. <laughs> I feel sorry for him because like he's tortured. He's got a beautiful wife that he's not plowing the field on. His wife looks like Linda Carter. She's beautiful, but he's not plowing that field. He's out there trying to he's he's going um, hunting for some mud or something. I don't get it. He's a mud hunter. And he's he's a mud hunter. And he's got a wife. He's got a wife. Like they've been together like twenty years. Does she, do you think she knows or? But I, you know that I, I'm not gonna like I'm not like lions will eat you in the forest, right? Or the jungle. Do you fault so. the lion for their their thirst to eat us? No, you just stay away from the jungle. So this is why <laughs> gays don't bother me because I'm not around gays. Well, you like, thought if, you if they, this guy that happens though, like you didn't know, and then this guy pulls his dick out, like it yeah, happened yeah. to Jay too. Well, he's, like, he's on a power, he's on a power trip. He wants to dominate people because he's weak. He's a short man. He doesn't have much power, and he's a well, he's a dominant short guy, Napoleon complex, mm. and uh, he he gets power through humiliating people and ridiculing people and putting people down. He's just a negative person. Um, Sounds like some it. people are actually super broken like that. That used to be a lot of way children were raised. Their parents put them down. That's also a motif of a Jewish mother. Oh, you'll never do anything. You'll never be any good. You're a loser. Mm. All that negative self-talk. I mean, there was many generations of people who were raised with all this negative self-talk. That's not how I was raised. My dad raised me to... You can do anything in life, son. You could be president of the United States if you want to be. You can do anything. Don't, don't, you know, if you give any, anything enough effort, you'll probably achieve it, which is why I decided to run for president. And that actually ruined my life. Like all the crazies came out and a lot of bad things started happening to, to me because I spoke a truth that I should not have said. But, but if I was, you know, they would, they wouldn't ridicule me if I was wrong. They're ridiculing me because I'm right. If I was wrong, two plus two equals five, they'd be like, poor Wayne. He just sucks with math. He's really stupid. Poor guy. He's just really dumb. But that's not what they're saying. People are saying Wayne's right. People are saying we like Wayne. And that's that. That's going against the establishment because they're putting up these puppets, these yes men who are sucking Israel dick 
nonstop. Israel did 9-11. They murdered 4,000 Americans. We're, we've, been a, we've been invaded by a hostile nation, Israel, since 2001, if not earlier. Most likely JFK was killed by Israel because of maybe their nuclear reactor and uh, getting rid of the, um, what do you call it? The financials, the, the Federal Reserve. It's a private bank with a federal sounding name created in 1913. So our whole nation is gamed by this, by this, uh, as Hitler would say, the international. No, 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 no. Just calm down. We're on kick, Wayne. Just be careful. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Just, just bring it down a notch. Um. <clears throat> anyway, go ahead, um, Jay. Any any thoughts there? <clears throat> oh, not really. Just, did you have questions from? No, I don't think the they chat? have any. So I was gonna, I was gonna let you give oh, okay. give your final thoughts on this. This conversation really went to some places I didn't expect. Yeah, I don't know. When we uh, when we get back on, I'd like to. I have that. Uh, like I said last time, there's a, a username on Twitter or X that I made called L Y H I T M. Look your heart in the mirror. The letters there on that shirt, L Y H I T M. It's so it's at. And I posted a bunch of media, and there's a couple. Uh, there's the main one to watch, where. Uh, I talk about the uh, Rolling Stone article, which I didn't talk about it tonight, but I'm sitting in Pizza Hut and I opened the Rolling Stone to an article about a kid that used to work in Pizza Hut in Coeur d'Alene. And I'm sitting in Pizza Hut in Coeur d'Alene and, you know, this massive thing. And I freaking. Uh, yeah, we went through that. Yeah. So there's a there's a video on there for somebody that just kind of wants to verify or whatever, know that it's true. Uh, there's a video that I did like a couple months after that to apply for a Rolling Stone uh you know, magazine and you can click on that. And it, you know, there's other media there to look at and just, there's a picture of Snake Lake. There's a picture of me when I was strong and you, and if you compare that to me being on that video to Rolling Stone, you can see that I'm crippled in the video to Rolling Stone. And I, I'm only bringing that up because I really don't have any closing thoughts or anything, you know. It's, That's fine. Everything well, next I say time is- we'll, <clears throat> Next time we have you on, maybe we'll go through the, the lost thing. I know you wanted to do that. Um, a couple more weeks, we'll have you back on, maybe another Saturday show or something like that, and we can go through some of this other stuff. Um, but I think this was a fruitful conversation uh, with you and Wayne. I thought it went pretty well. Okay. Yeah. Well, what did you think, Wayne? I guess, go ahead. Uh, well, I want to make a comment about your shirt behind you with the red background and the white lettering. With the, It's got the Egyptian eye, the like the eye of raw maybe it's called mm -hmm. well that also i think is a cross section of the human brain the amdula mogliata I, i'm pronouncing it incorrectly yeah. but there's a part of the human brain in the middle that looks like the eye and they're calling that the third eye and that actually might be our consciousness and that actually might be the transmitter and receiver to the universe like i i believe that our memory like if you think about riding a bicycle as a child, well, it's actually not stored in our brain. Our brain says, give me the memory of the bicycle. And it comes from the universe back into our brain. So our brain makes a request and then it receives the information. Then we think about it in our brain. And that picture in the middle of your t-shirt is actually the, the mechanism in our brain that uh, sends and receives part of that information. And there's, there's stories about, uh, what is it called? Um, fluoride fluoride will calcify the penile gland and i think the middle of that the eye part of that is the penile gland and by calcification of the penile gland it stops our ability to have a conversation with god our ancestors or the consciousness of the universe so like be aware that there is fluoride in our water and there's much more fluoride in bottled water Basically, Joseph Stalin learned if you put fluoride in the water, you could get rid of 80% of the guards in the gulag. And it just so happens that we might have noticed people buying all this water and we're like, they're so stupid. They're paying all this money. They're paying more for a gallon of water than a gallon of gasoline when they can get it at home for free. And the reason is there's more fluoride. So the more water they buy, the dumber they become. And they're just on this, this choo-choo train of buying expensive water giving the money to the enemy who's dumbing them down and then they're calcifying their penal gland which which diminishes their ability to have a relationship with a higher power god our ancestors the consciousness of the universe and you know esp 
Like if you think about a friend from high school, let's call it Bob, and you haven't talked to Bob in 10 years, and then tomorrow the phone rings and it's Bob. Yeah, I just thought about you because you sent a signal from your brain and Bob heard you on the other side of the world. There's evidence of monkeys, like a monkey doesn't spear fish, but it, it's called the hundred monkey theory. Like some monkeys on one side of the earth learn to spear, spear fish where they stab a fish with a, a pointy stick. Then monkeys on the other side of the earth a week later learned how to do it, but there's no way for the monkeys on one side to go 12,000 miles and teach the other ones how to do it. So how do they do it? And it's the brain. The brain is a transmitter and receiver. So those monkeys are like, you know, I think we should sharpen a stick and throw it at those fish. So there's a lot we don't know. And I, I think just being open to these unconventional ideas can make our life more relaxing, more understandable and bring us closer to god and our ancestors thank you very cool now jay tell them where to find you uh twitter at c-o-e-u-r underscore d underscore j-a-y is my main that's where i post everything and but the l-y-h-i-t-m that is my second account that has like the easy uh because my I live in Core to Lane, so it's Core to J, and the reason Makes I did sense. that was because L Y H I T M was getting too political, and I didn't want my business to necessarily merge completely with my uh, Twitter feed. I got kicked off of uh, a couple of payment platform type things. You know, I, I'm like everybody; I get banned here and there, so uh, I separated the two. But there's also a site that's my little. Uh, online store that's minimal, but it's heartmirrors.company.site. Heartmirrors, all one word, dot company, dot site. And you can see just basically like the jewelry that I make, just a very small smattering of what I do. And I have a YouTube channel, LYHITM, where I've got uh, my loss theory, I've got my stand, you know, they've got some pretty decent videos there on at L-Y-H-I-T-M. So that's the three big ones. Wayne, tell them where to find you. Talk about your candidacy, any way they can support you. Go ahead, sir. I appreciate you Thank coming you, on Ralph. again tonight. Jay, Short notice, by the great. way. Short notice, and I appreciate you coming on. Same for Jay. Yeah, always. Jay, it was definitely great meeting you. I'm from your neighborhood. I used to live uh, above Spokane, a town called Deer Park, where I went to high school. And uh, so I know that region of America, it's beautiful up there. So it was nice meeting you. I can be reached at my last name, which is lambright.com, spelled L-A-M-B-R-I-G-H-T.com. There's links to my Twitter and my YouTube channel there. And uh, I have a new Twitter channel called Vote Lambright. And then my normal Twitter channel is Desert Rabbi 2024. Mm -hmm. But the only thing to remember is really just my lambright.com. And that's got links to all my other stuff. And... Um, while I've got a slow start on my campaigning this time, I still got to get my federal election paperwork done. And we've got like, the election isn't for seven months. So uh, the election really doesn't start happening. The election season, I call it, starts around June or July when they really start pushing for the different candidates. And, uh, you know, what are my chances of winning? Well, one in six, because there's really only six people really running for president, Biden, Trump, and a few others and myself. And there's no guarantee that Joe Biden or Donald Trump will live till election day. They're getting so old and uh, there's a lot at stake here. And also, uh, you know, it's, well, I, I really can't comment on the authenticity of all that, all that process. I would just say that just by me projecting my ideas, I've already affected some change. Uh, I had like campaign promises such as uh, the death penalty for pedophiles. Mm. And now Florida has that as a law and different things like i had 33 dollar minimum wage and now they're talking about a 50 dollar minimum wage here in california so some of my ideas are inspiring other people and i would encourage other people to pursue a life of politics you might not be elected yet your campaign promises and your ideas might be adopted so it's really just all about leadership and projecting ideas and maybe if they're loved they'll be adopted and we will through those actions make the world a better place thank you Thank you to both you gentlemen, uh, Corda J here, New Age Messiah, and the amazing Wayne Lambright. As always, uh, I've enjoyed having you both on the show tonight, and I hope you have a good rest of your weekend. Peace out. Peace out, gentlemen. 
we go. Round of applause for both guests. What a segment. <clears throat> Thank you for watching this clip by Colonel J. This is the King of Bold here. Remember to like and subscribe. Juice.